As Ridge explains at Forrester that he didn't want any secrets between them, and that's why he admitted to having an intimate time with another lady, Brooke is taken aback. Therefore, Taylor kissed you, thinks Brooke. Ridge responds that they actually kissed and reiterates how they were overcome by the joy of seeing Finn and Steffi again. Brooke averts her gaze. You kissed it to seal it. Ridge fumbles to explain that it was an accident and wasn't intended. There had to have been emotions there, according to Brooke. Although she values his candor, she will be open with him about how much learning about this hurts. Just disappointed, I say. Taylor thinks back to her kiss with Ridge at the cliff house as Steffi approaches. She is curious as to whether her mother was considering the interaction she had with her father. She believes Taylor needs Ridge while Thomas needs Douglas. Thomas tells Hope he is at the cabin to chat to her about Douglas when he first arrives. He continues to believe Douglas ought to move in with him. Deacon is happy to be on the opposite side of the bar at Il Giardino. Paul advises him to take it easy, but Sharp counters that a guy needs to indulge in alcohol occasionally. The subject of Sheila Carter being killed by a bear comes up. Deacon makes a head shake. What a strategy. Paul tells Deacon to slow down as he pours more alcohol. Tomorrow, he will meet with his parole officer. Deacon isn't a saint, but he won't risk his daughter's love and respect or the foundation he's worked so hard to build. Not even her mother finds seeing him repulsive. He wouldn't do anything to ruin that and end him back in jail. Right then, the restaurant's front entrance is opened by a redhead. Deacon gives her an admiring, upbeat expression on all sides of his face. Deacon is told by Paul to end the night. But he keeps looking over at the redhead. He mutters, The redhead is scorching holes in me, to the bartender. He acknowledges that Daddy hasn't had any action in a long. Paul acknowledges that he feels the same way. Deacon furrows his brow. Hope doesn't want to talk about this right now at the cabin. Thomas claims that she has made it obvious. But since they share custody, they must talk about it because the situation cannot continue as it is. Hope contests that he is content. Although Thomas is appreciative of her filling in, he now needs to be Douglas' primary caretaker. Hope argues that because this is the boy's home, they cannot simply uproot him. Douglas misses him. Thomas tells her. He says, You heard him. And he also misses his son. Hope begs him not to switch places with her. We need to be together. Thomas had been debating this for a time, but what Douglas said cemented his choice. He has already made plans for them to relocate to Eric's home. Hope is shocked that he supports removing the boy from his home. Thomas reveals that he believes the moment has come for him to live as a forester with his family. More significantly, he realizes that he must devote his, his time to being his son's father. Taylor informs Steffi at the cliff home that Thomas was his route to talk to Hope about the custody dispute. Steffi reiterates that Taylor and Ridge should get back together, as well as for Douglas to be with his father. Taylor says they had an amazing kiss. With Ridge, Steffi asserts that she has a good chance. She must lead the assault, go to battle, and stand up for him. While Brooke finds it upsetting to imagine Ridge and Taylor sharing a kiss at Forrester, she can understand why they would have been swept up in the excitement of the moment. It has to have been really intense. Ridge confirms that it was the most incredible day. After discussing how the kiss was reciprocal, Brooke is forced to inquire, What kind of a kiss was it? Ridge doesn't understand what she's saying, but he calls it a genuine kiss. Although he has affections for Taylor, Brooke is his top priority. Well, I love you more than anything, Brooke chuckles, expressing her relief. They embrace. Brooke is aware that he has pardoned her for the numerous kisses. Therefore, she will overlook his one kiss with Taylor. We're proceeding immediately, right? However, Brooke has another topic to discuss with him. Thomas and his part in Douglas' life, I believe. Deacon is sorting mail in his broom closet home when the redhead knocks on the door. Lady, I don't know who you are but I'd sure like to know what's on your mind, the deacon growls. Seductively, the woman pushes her blouse aside. He asks softly, Really? The woman enters and deliberately shuts the door. After approaching her and taking her glasses off, deacon forces her up against the wall. 
She pulls his hoodie over his shoulders and lowers it. Deacon then lifts her up, positions her between her knees on the desk, and carries her over to the bed, laying her on her back while they make out. Thomas believes Hope must have anticipated that this day would eventually arrive at the cottage. Douglas is welcome to spend the night with him tomorrow and Eric's. Just like that? Inquires Hope. No prior logistics conversation with Liam. Thomas has long permitted them to act on behalf of Douglas. But that needs to change. Don't argue with me about this, please. Ridge informs Brooke at Forrester that he approves of Thomas moving into Eric's with Douglas. What? She gasps. Ridge claims that while Hope has been wonderful, he now needs to be with his father to learn about their family history. He'll see to it that Thomas is successful. Brooke objects to Douglas considering Hope to be his mother. Ridge explains his case once more and tells Brooke that he really needs her help. No, spits Brooke. She screams that Thomas can't just come in, grab his son, and have whatever he wants. No, he resides with Liam, Hope, and his young sister. That is his household. His stability comes from what he knows. I won't let that happen. Not your son. He must stay with my daughter.